I got recruited to come here by the chair of psychiatry to um, bring the, um, the research and the lab work that I was doing with um, human sexual behavior and, um, and to come in and be the director of forensics okay. psychiatry. We have a forensic fellowship program where we train um, psychiatrists to become forensic psychiatrists, which is a year-long program and it's accredited. We also provide instruction in the general and child adolescent psychiatry programs here at MUSC. We um, also teach in the medical school and do invited lectures in a variety of other settings. And then the last piece is, is research. Uh, we currently have two federal grant uh, funded research projects looking at internet crimes against children, sexual crimes. We have faculty that have had grants from state and private foundations as well. We have several um, projects going on at any given time, all having some sort of forensic component to them. Okay. So those are the three big pictures of what goes on here. Uh, we're one of the few places that can conduct a sexual behavior evaluation all in one place that includes uh, the three main components to an evaluation, one being uh, the clinical assessment, which is an interview of the individual, collateral interviews of other people in their life, and review of, of records, medical, mental health, criminal justice, education, employment, whatever records are applicable. So that's one component. Uh, the second is what we call psychometric testing, which is some people call it psychological testing. And then the third is the physiological assessment, which could be laboratory tests and neuroimaging, but also we do visual reaction time um, assessments. We have penile plasmography. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, um, and that's where the certification comes in. We're actually one of the few labs, the last time I checked in North America, there was only four or five that could do photovaginal plasmography, which is the female version of penile plasmography. We have the, the technical ability to do that, and we're looking at expanding and actually doing some research in that area. Okay. That's is that a, like arousal that measures arousal? Or? Correct, okay. right, right. Just like penile plasmography measures um, sexual arousal. Yeah, but focusing in on, on abusive, where there, there's somebody who's non-consenting in, in, the, in the picture, there, um, there isn't as much research as we really need. It's, it's difficult to get it funded, um, and then it's difficult oftentimes to conduct it because in many cases the people you're trying to study are in the custody of a, of a government agency and they create certain issues and, and being able to have access and, and approval to do research. Uh, and then of course funding is required for all research. A few things to keep in mind in, in terms of what we know about people who abuse children, it's all based on people who have been caught and, and it's been uh, investigated, studied in some form or fashion. So we don't even know what kind of level of activity there is that's never been reported or reported and never followed up on.